Gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I want to show you how to solo Cartographers a Role Player Tale. So this is going to be a roll and write game that is published by Thunderworks Games, but it's designed by um, Jordi Aden, and I really, really like this one. We are going to be making maps for the Queen and trying to score points based on her decrees each season of the game. So I'm happy to announce that setup for this game is super straightforward. Basically, you're going to lay out these decree cards, A, B, C, and D. They're going to help you determine how you score in the game. So you have four stacks of cards with separate backs. So you shuffle them up and grab just one from each stack. You're only working with four of these decree cards per game. Shuffle. So once those are selected, then you shuffle these up a little bit, and then you randomly assign one to each of these decrees. So we'll look at those in just a moment, but this is how our scoring is gonna work. Each of these is a scoring condition, and we're gonna score different conditions depending on what season it is. So in the spring, we're gonna score A and B. In summer, we'll score B and C. In fall, we'll score C and D. And then in winter, the final season of the game, we'll score D and A. And we'll talk through the amount of time for each season as we go, but this is a time marker. So it tells you how long each of the seasons lasts. They get shorter towards the end. So those are our seasons. And then here are our explore cards. So these are just cards that'll tell us different types of land and shapes of land that we can draw on our maps. So we shuffle that up, but then sadly, we're also going to have to shuffle in one assault card per season. So we'll shuffle up and see what little nasties we end up with. So for now, I'll just put that aside. We'll shuffle our, our ambush card in here somewhere. And that is our explore deck ready to go. So that is set up, which is really, really nice. Then all you have to do is get yourself a sheet to play on. So here's a, my lovely little map sheet. Of course, I will be the, car the great cartographer, Liz. So when you're playing a multiple uh, multiplayer game, you get to pick your own title. Um, so not so much in solo. In solo, your title is assigned to you by the queen, depending on how well you score. So we could get, you know, a really honorable title, or we could get one that's vaguely insulting, depending on how well we do. The other thing that's kind of cute is that you can draw like a little family crest here, which is enjoyable. So I'll just make one up really quick. There, the Liz family crest is just a little cat. I like it. Okay, so there's actually two sides to this sheet that you can choose to work with. Um, there is a harder side as well that has this kind of wastelands in the middle that you have to draw around and it makes things a little bit more challenging. We're just going to show off the base side for now. So <clears throat> we have our map here. These are mountains. If you surround a mountain completely with filled in spaces, you get a coin. There's a coin tracker down here and it affects your scores per season. And then we also have these ruins. There will be ruins cards that require us to draw our next feature on top of a ruins, unless there aren't any left, in which case we get slightly penalized for that. So we have to be thinking about where we're placing things on this map as we overturn terrain tiles and I mean, terrain cards and figure out where to put stuff. So let's have a look at our decrees and see what kind of things we're gonna be having in mind. All right, so let's overturn A. Okay, so we have stone side forest. So we earn a three reputation stars for each mountain space connected to another mountain space by a cluster of forest spaces. So a cluster is any number of um, squares that are the same terrain type. But basically what that means is that I'm gonna need to build forest between here and here, or from here to here. Basically I need to try to connect mountains with forests. That's a pretty tall order for round A. I probably, for, for spring, I probably can't expect a large score off of this card until like the next winter when we score it again, but we'll see what comes up. We also are gonna look at B, Shield Gate. So you can earn two reputation stars for each village space in the second largest cluster of village spaces. Ooh, okay, so basically um, I need to have at least two clusters of villages going, and then I will earn 
points for the second largest one. So I need to maybe work on two village clusters at a time and just kind of keep them relatively evenly sized, but then score for the second largest. Ugh. All right, C is Mage's Valley. So I earn two reputation stars for each water space that's adjacent to a mountain space, earn one reputation star for each farm space adjacent to a mountain space. So this is actually really rough because I'm going to have to kind of divide up my loyalties in terms of how I'm going to connect things because Stoneside Forest wants me to connect forests and mountains. However, Mage's Valley wants me to put farmland and water next to mountains. So I'm going to need to be really careful about how I play stuff because I have competing priorities depending on the round that we're scoring. That's tough. And then D is Borderlands. So I earn six reputation stars for each complete row or complete column of filled spaces. So in addition to connecting all these things across the middle, I should also be attempting to fill rows and columns as I go. So this is a pretty tall order <laughs> and we'll just kind of see how it goes. So for spring, we're gonna be doing A and B only for scoring. And I'm, we're also going to have eight time. So as we turn over exploration cards, um, we will see how much time it took to map the features that are on the cards. All right, so let's look at our very first exploration card. Okay, we got the Great River. So what's interesting about this card is, as you can see, it's going to take up one time. So we're you know nowhere near done for now. But it has two shape options at the bottom. What this basically means is that I can either do this um, row of three boxes and take a coin, or I can do this larger, or more complicated space on my board. So I think that since I'm not really going for scoring on River right now, but it will pay off down the line. Ooh. So I can either place this box of three and get a coin, or I can hit two water spaces surrounding a mountain. Interesting. All right, while I'd like to guarantee four points down the line, I also need to be thinking about where I'm building my forest and I don't want to cover too many ruin spaces just yet. So I'm going to take this shape and a coin. So I fill in my little coins chart right here with one coin. And then this shape of three boxes, I can basically rotate any way that I want. So I'm going to do it right here. That way I have some river that is touching a mountain for the future, but doesn't take up too much space and it's not going to interfere with trying to create forest paths between mountain ranges right now. So you just draw in little water squiggles to indicate that this is water. The nice thing about this particular game is that you don't really have to be an artist. It's actually pretty easy to just sort of delineate different symbols. I guess you wanted to be crazy. You could get like colored pencils or something, but I'm not showing off that I might have done that on camera. All right, let's draw another card and see where it takes us. Orchard. Okay, so this one is interesting because it gives me two land type options and only one shape to go with. So in this case, I can go with either forest or farmland and I have to draw this sort of L shape, but I can do it in any shape of my choosing. So I think what I may do is let's think about what mountains are going to be maybe the easiest to connect. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to choose Orchard because of this Stoneside Forest scoring condition that's coming up. And I am going to try to connect these two mountains. So I'm going to draw the shape this way. And then the forests just look like little trees. So we'll do like basically the same shape that I use for sheep, except for the trunk instead of legs. Congratulations on getting to witness my amazing art. Okay, so that's our second card. We've used up three time out of eight for spring. So let's do another. Ooh, the forgotten forest. Okay, so again, this is one of the situations where I have to draw forest, but I get some choices about what shapes to draw. Ooh. Okay, so I may end up going with the shape in the coin just because the shape is a little, wait. Hang on, maybe I do want the shape because I can rotate. So what I may do is try to get like 
multiple mountains kind of in this cluster up here. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna rotate it so that it looks like this. So there's those two spaces here and then those two spaces here. And then if we can just get one more forest tile up against this mountain, we'll have connected that one too. I'm trying to work with what I got here. Also, we could maybe fill in a row if we keep going in this kind of way. So that's also good. All right, so that's what I've chosen to do. We're at four time. We are halfway through the spring season. So let's get another card. Ooh, a Hamlet. Fantastic. Okay, so in this case, right, Shield Gate, we earn two reputation stars for each village space in the second largest cluster of village spaces. So I don't really know what my clustering options are going to be. Ooh. So let me think about this. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this larger shape so that if I get a smaller village cluster, I have the ability to score off of it. I think that's my plan. The coins are great, but I'm going for shapes right now. I'm going to put it down here. That way it's not interfering with my mountain connections too much, but every mountain you surround, it's like mining and you get coins for that. So I don't want to like ignore that too much either. So here's my little village. Here my little crappy houses. Aw, these poor people, they do not live in houses that have been reconstructed by Chip and Joanna Gaines. Nope. All right, so my Hamlet is out. One, two, three, four, five time. We still have three time left in the spring. So let's see what it brings us. Ooh, we got a zero time rift land. Okay, so what that means basically is I get to draw one square of any land that I want and it doesn't cost me any time. So I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to put another forest. Let's put it right here. I could have put it here. Maybe I'll come to Rue the day, but we're just going to make this connection. That way I have three mountains that are connected and that is pretty good. If you ask me next, Ooh, a treetop village. So this is actually sort of interesting because based on my scoring conditions that are coming up, right? I need to think about, um, whether I'm going to do trees and try to connect more mountains or if I'm going to do a village. I think I will do a village. I might have to look this up. If I have two villages of the same size, I don't know what that would mean. Okay, so this is rough. Actually, it doesn't, I just checked the rules. It doesn't say whether you earn points if you have two the same size. So I think I'm actually going to go ahead and just take this as a treetop village because that way I can get guaranteed points off of it. So what I'm going to do is take it as trees and we're going to rotate it kind of this way. Then we can do it like this. So that yet another mountain gets connected by forest, which is at least another three points. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so at least we have that going on. And then, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. So this next card's probably gonna be our last. So let's see what we get. Okay, we got a temple ruins. So what that means is that whatever we draw, it has to cross a ruin space, which is why I've been kind of avoiding these. If you get a whole bunch and you have to, to cover a lot of different ruins and you can't, then you can't draw that shape. You just get like a one by one land. So, you know, I want to keep my options open. So we're going to get a homestead. Okay. So the thing that kind of sucks is that I would really love to do this as farmland in preparation for next round, but we're still here. So it's going to be a village for shield gate. Cause that's what's getting scored. So I think what we're going to do is we're definitely drawing this separate. This one's smaller than this other cluster of houses that I made. Thank goodness. So this is four and we're going to draw it over a ruins somewhere. Hmm. What would be the best spot? Okay. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw it here so that it covers this ruins, right? Ooh, no, it's so close to a mountain though. You don't want to do that. I was thinking about trying to like get a whole row full, but I don't know what would be smart. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put it here and hope for the best. 
because as much as I want to surround mountains and try to get coins for that, I'm hoping for some more of these um, land and water tiles to do that with next time. I had a really weirdly foresty and homesteady turn. It was kind of lucky, but maybe also unlucky for future scoring. So I think I had a pretty hot first round. We're going to find out. So spring is over because we have crossed eight. So I'll show you how to set back up for the next season. But first, we're going to go ahead and score for spring. So what we've got going on here is we're only going to score A and B. And for this one, we get three reputation stars for each mountain space that's connected to another one by a cluster of four spaces. So our number of connected mountains is one, two, three, four. So that is going to be 12 points. Not bad, not bad. And then for Shieldgate, we get two points for each um, homestead in our second largest village, which is going to be four spaces. So two, four, six, eight. Eight. We have one coin and we have zero monsters, which sounds like it would be a good thing, except that it totally isn't because now we're going to have to shuffle a second ambush card into the deck and can actually get two of them in the next season, which is not the best. So we'll just kind of see where it all takes us. But we're at 21 points, which is a pretty hot first round. So I guess if the next one kicks our butt, at least we had this moment together. Okay, so now what we're going to do is spring's going to go away to reveal summer. And then we're going to shuffle all these cards back together. And not only that, but we need to add another of these ambush cards and shuffle that in as well. Because we can't just be free from ambushes, now can we? All right, so we'll shuffle it all together. Just, just because you have a lucky first round doesn't mean the next one's going to be good. We could get two ambushes in a row now. So let's see how it turns out. So now in the summer, we're going to be scoring B and C. So I'll get to score Shield Gate again. And then this one will have its own kind of thing going on. So hopefully I actually get some water and some farmland to do something with. Because right now I'm only getting like one point off of this card. But Shield Gate I'll score again for another eight at least. So there's, that's pretty good. All right, so let's flip a card and see what happens. Orchard. Okay, so this one I can take for forest or for uh, farmland. I'm sure you can guess I'm going to take it as farmland. So I think what I'm going to do is even though it's not the best to cover. Ooh, here we go. I'm going to flip this. So it's like this shape. And I'm going to put it here. That way we have two mountainsides that are surrounded by farmland. Success. Maybe, but two times have gone by. Next, Great River. So we saw this one before. The question is, do we want to cover a whole bunch of spaces or just do three? I think we kind of just want to do three. Here's what I want to do. Let's go ahead and put it next to a mountain. But let's also see if we can kind of, oh, here, let's do this. We're going to take this three shape and we're going to put the river here. And the reason that we've done that is that we've put our shape down. We get a coin for choosing that shape and we get another coin for surrounding a mountain with filled spaces. So basically we've been mining over here as well and it's going to increase our coin count, which is more points at the end. And actually after this, I'll show you the mini expansion where you can actually get more out of your coins. So now we're up to three coins and this, this corner of the map is looking a little full, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. If we can put another three thing here, we can fill a row and score for D. So we got to start thinking about the borderlands as well. All right, we're up to three time. Ooh, farmland. I'm looking out. Okay. Hmm. So I got to make some choices though. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to come out here in the middle. It's going to maybe keep me from connecting everything, all the forests and mountains, but honestly, I feel like I'm scoring well enough off of this that say la vie, I want to score off of C as well. So we're going to take this larger shape and we're going to put it here. Oh yeah. 
So now we have this big fat farmland right here. I'm starting to fill up enough of this map that we're gonna have problems in future seasons, but oh well. So we're at four. And now we have a choice of marshlands. So that can be forest or water. Oh, also I surrounded this, um, another mountain, so we're gonna get a coin for that. So that's not bad at all. Okay. Ooh, what do I wanna do? I can try to put more stuff around mountains to score, or I can try to play a little bit of long game and fill in some space on here, hoping that it's going to, um, to help me score more at the end, like off of bonuses for, for something like D, like Borderlands. Hmm. I also don't want to cover too many ruins because I can ruin you later. Ha ha ha. Okay. All right. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it as water and I'm going to put it here. So it'll score, but it's also going to be working on a row for me. So that's what we'll do. Water. Please let me be able to recognize that as water later. I think so. All right, so we're at six time. We only have two more time left in the summer. Outpost ruins. The next thing has to be over ruins, no matter what it is. And it is a bugbear assault. Unfortunate. All right, so what's gonna happen here is that the ambush is gonna resolve normally. We don't have to put it over ruins or anything like that. So what we're gonna do is we are going to use the solo rules for um, basically assault placement, ambush placement. So in a multiplayer game, this is really devilish actually. What happens is you have to trade your sheet with somebody else and then you draw the ambush on each other's maps. So you can really be difficult with your friends, because <laughs> it can be very take that. In solo, what happens is there's there are rules for placement. So if you look very closely, you can see that this block right here is a little bit more purple and not black. And so you can see that this is the corner that's being emphasized. So what that means is that we're gonna try to draw it for starting in this corner, and then we'll move around the map until we find a place where we could put the ambush. If you can't place it, then it doesn't get placed. But this one actually can be placed right up here in this corner. Ew. So what's gonna happen is this one is two spaces, two blocks and then nothing and then two blocks. So we're gonna draw the monsters like this because they fit right up in that top right corner. Bummer. So we're just gonna draw little monsters. Aw. They're so bad. And we're about to score, which makes this even worse. They're very happy monsters. I gave them like the little angry eyebrows of mischief. Okay, so these monsters are messing me up because what happens when you have an assault is that these do come as filled spaces. So there are things about them that are good. Like I can still mine this mountain, but you lose a point for every side of a monster space that like every square that is left exposed, basically. Um, so you, if you can't surround all of the monsters, then you lose points. And we'll go through that negative scoring momentarily because we're pretty close to the end. So it's going to leave the game. Get out, monsters. And now we're going to do... Okay, so this now has to go on ruins. We have a forgotten forest, which has to go on ruins somewhere. So unfortunately, I can't put it here. And I'm just trying to think about like what the best course of action would be for me for this. So I can try to put it somewhere where I'm like covering a ruin and also touching these monsters to kind of mitigate my score loss. Or I can put it somewhere else and, you know, get a coin and maybe make some progress on other parts of the map. All right, so here's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and take this shape and a coin. I'm gonna put forest here and then here. That way I leave myself the potential option to get over to this mountain without taking up too many spaces for other stuff I might wanna be trying to do. And if I get a good shape, I can maybe fill this row. So that'd be good also. That's what I'll do. And then I get a coin for that. So that's another point. And the other thing is that you score your coins at the end of every single season. So you just get five, five, five. As you go, it's, it's, it's kinda of nice. Okay, so we are at one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven. So we're going to actually play one more card this season. Or more than that, because we just got some Rift Lands. Okay, so what would I like to fill with just a thing? Let me think about it. All right, I'm going to go for point gain. I'm actually just going to take... Um, I'm going to take one of these uh, farmlands and I'm just going to pop it right next to a mountain because that seems like a good plan to me. Good stuff. All right, and then we get actually one more, a Hamlet. All right, so we actually haven't been working on the shield gate scoring condition at all because we've been doing other stuff. So, ooh. Let me think about what would be good this time. Hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm not crazy. All right, we're still going. Okay, Um. all right, I wanna take the coin this time. I think what I'm gonna do is you still score for your second largest village. So why don't we use this three to make this five one into the second largest instead? So I get this little choice of three and a coin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it or just leave it. Ooh. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. Let's go ahead and put it here. Making this little village the largest cluster, and then this one will be the second largest for scoring. So that's not a bad idea. And then we do get a coin. Also was a good idea. Okay. So that's all of our time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Summer is up and it's time to score. All right, so let's see what we can do in here. All right, so we're gonna score shield gates first because it's B and C. So for B this time, the you score two points per little house in the second largest village. So two, four, six, eight, ten. Excellent. Here in C, Mage's Valley, we're going to get points for each water and each, um, oh shoot, I reversed these, didn't I? For some reason I thought that the farmlands were worth two and then the waters were worth one. Oh well, we're just going to live with that. You just live with your mistakes, right? So this uh, mountain has one farmland by it and one water by it. So one, two, three. This will be four, five because it has one water touching it. Six, seven for the two farmlands. Eight, nine for the two farmlands. 10, 11 for that water. So still not too bad at all. We have six coins. And now we gotta take off for these monsters. Woof. All right, and so the way this works for monster scoring is you lose one point for each, I just checked the rules to be sure to how to explain it right. You lose one point for each empty space adjacent to a monster space. These are touching two monsters, but you still only lose one point. So I'm gonna lose one, two, three, four, five points for these monsters. Ugh. Minus five. All right, so that puts me at 10 and 11 is 21, plus essentially one because the minus five, so 20. Two. I mean, we're holding on. This is, I think, I think we're scoring fairly respectably, but we'll find out. So now we're going to prepare for the fall. So this card will go. We're now going to score C and D, which is going to be rough because now I need to think about filling in some borderlands. Yikes. Um, then we're going to shuffle all these cards back. And of course we have another ambush card that's going to go in so we can still get ambushed up to twice in this season. Fall also only has seven times, so things are getting getting quicker from here. Okay. So let's see how we do. First card, Treetop Village. That's not super helpful in terms of scoring off of Mage's Valley but maybe we can use it to fill in some rows or columns. So let's think about that. The other thing is that I do know for a fact that we're gonna score A again in the next round. So I could just take the opportunity now to use this village to connect to this mountain and then all the mountains will be connected by forest, which playing the long game, I think I may actually do. So let's go ahead and put that shape right here. Good forest. Okay, so I think that was a reasonable choice. 
Next card, Goblin Attack. No, oh God. This is like a really irritating shape. Okay, so we're gonna try to start with the bottom right corner. Then we're basically just gonna go around until we can find a spot. So it's not gonna fit here. No, no, no. And the other thing is you don't flip it. You try to fit it like as is. Um, I'm gonna say the first legitimate placement spot maybe is probably right here. Got to do something about these monster spaces too. They're messing me up. Because this is going to be a lot of negative points if I don't do anything about it. Boo. All right. So let's see what happens next. A Hamlet. Okay. So I can take three and a coin or five. Hmm. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that three and a coin. Even though I don't want to lose a lot of ruins opportunities, we're kind of running low in the seasons. I'm going to come up here. So I'm going to cover all of these spaces with a Hamlet. So that gets me one coin for choosing that shape. But I also get a coin because we just surrounded a mountain. So that's another coin for me. So they count as a filled space, even though they're monsters. So we've done a little bit of mitigation here and also gotten an extra coin, which will help with some points. So let's say that, that was a good choice, theoretically. All right, a rift card. Now I can put a something anywhere. Ooh, okay. So I definitely want to do something that's going to keep these monsters from messing with me too bad. So what would be the best for that? I'm going to put it right in here. I'm just going to make another... It doesn't even matter what I make. Let's just say it's another farmland. That way this space is filled and we still have a chance at getting the full row. I think that might have been the best choice that I could make. All right, marshlands. So they can be forest or water. We are scoring Mage's Valley, so if I can get something out of making it water, that'd be cool. But I don't think that's necessarily going to be the case. It's a big, awkward shape. Hmm, where would be the best place to put this big, awkward shape? Um, ugh, we're getting to the point where I don't have as many good options as I used to have here. I think what we're going to do, though, is let's go ahead and put it like this. And we'll just do it as, it doesn't matter which one we do this. Let's just say it's water because it's easier to draw. So what we did do is we did complete a row, which is good. We also blocked off another space that's adjacent to a monster, which is good. So I'm gonna call that a win-ish. We're up to five time, so let's keep going. Oh, also this uh, goblin attack will leave the game. I don't need to leave it in my pile. Okay, Hinterland Stream. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, fall's gonna end here. So we have this shape. Where can I put this that is gonna benefit me the most? Yeesh. I do not love these options. As you can see towards the end of the game, things get a little rougher. So we're gonna come up here, I think. Ugh, I don't wanna cover more ruins, but you gotta do what you gotta do. And so let's just say that it is water. No problem with that. So that way, at least this dude, this space is now covered too. So we're going to lose a, a bit fewer monster points. Still plenty, but not as many as I could have lost. All right. So we've done what we can and fall is already over. That was a quick season. So now we're going to score. So we're going to score for C again. I don't think I made any progress on that front, but let me check. Okay, so this was one, two, three for this mountain. Four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, eleven. Yeah, it's still just 11 points. I didn't get very far with, with uh, scoring condition C. So it's 11 points. For D, how many rows slash columns do we complete? 
Not many. So it's going to be six for this row. And did I get anything else? I did not. I had thought I was making so much progress, but nope. This is not full. This still has big chunks out of it. What a shame. All right, so only six points. That was not a super hot round on that front. For coins, we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So at least I have money to comfort me. And then with the monsters, it's going to be minus one, minus two, three, four, five, six. So we lost six. So 11 and eight is 19. Rough. Okay, so we actually did worse this round than we had in previous ones. And then here we're going to score D and A in the winter. So we have limited time to see what we can do. We're going to shuffle up and we're going to put this last ambush card in. No. All right, we are in the winter. The good news is that we're scoring D and A. A is pretty much set because we've connected all of the mountains with cluster of forest. So that's good. So that'll be a good 15 points at the end. So we need to be focusing on D, which is filling in rows and columns to the greatest extent possible. And we have six time to do it in. All right, we've got a kobold onslaught. Crap. All right, so they're gonna be in the bottom left corner and we'll move kind of clockwise around. Oh, there they go. So we have this giant monster cluster. They actually kind of helped us though, because now there's only one space that they're still touching. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. All right, so we have this giant mess of monsters over here, but I guess it could be worse, as long as I don't get more. All right, fishing village. Okay, so I guess we just have to decide where do I want to put in four anythings. Let's do it. Let's do it down here. Yeah, let's do it down here. And let's, even though um, it doesn't matter what it is, we're just going to make it houses because it's fun. And it makes these kind of big villages, and I kind of like that. All right, so we have our fishing village. So that was two time. If we didn't, ooh, I don't know if we're going to be able to fill these, but we got to try. We got to try. Okay. Ooh, forgotten forest. Okay, so I can take this shape or I can take these two in a coin. Hmm. So I think rather than that coin, I'm going to take a Hail Mary shot and maybe filling at least one more row or column. So according to the rules, I just checked to be sure these can be rotated and or flipped. So I'm going to draw the forest here. That way, if I get any openings at all to make something sort of small and fill these gaps, I'm going to be able to get something out of that. And it just seems like a good idea. We'll see. So up to six, I mean, we are up to three time out of six for winter. So I don't know what we're going to get. A hamlet. A hamlet. Okay. All right. So I got a choice to make. Okay, I think what I'm going to do in this one. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. All right, this is going to be our hamlet. So we are going to do the houses here. That way we have a filled column, which is really good, and we get a coin. There we go. There we go. Okay, so we're up to four time. Five. Ooh, it's a tiny little farmland with a coin. Where's the best place for the tiny little farmland? Um, all right, I'm going to take a guaranteed row down here. I'm going to put the farmland here and then take a coin. All right, so that's making scoring condition D look a little bit better. One, two, three, four, five. So one more time and I'm out. Yes. Okay, it's a rift card. Okay, where's the best place to put? Oh, this is perfect because this will keep me from losing points and it's going to fill a column. So let's just put another house here. These people are brave. They're going to live next to these monsters. Can't be stopped. And then 
Okay, Great River, this is gonna be the last card of the round. No, no, no. Yes, definitely, this is where the Great River needs to go. Yay, okay, awesome, it's gonna give me another column. So my D scoring is gonna be much bigger this time. Oof. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Winter is over. And now we are going to get to um, score. So we'll be scoring for winter and then I'll show you how to actually get a solo rating and we'll see what title I got. So for scoring a condition D, it is six points for, um, or it's reputation stars technically, sorry, but six points <laughs> for um, each completed row or column. So no, 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 yes. No, no, no. Oh, I'm an idiot. If I'd come over here, I would have scored higher than putting it here. Oh, well, my own fault. You live, you learn, right? No, no, no. And then yes. And then for columns. No, no, yes. No, no. This one is a yes. Yes, no, no, yes, no. So one, two, three, four, five, six times six is 36. All right, that's pretty whopping. I like that. And then for A, we got 15 because it was three per connected mountain and forests are connecting all of the mountains. So one, two, three, four, five times three is 15 for coins. We are up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten coins. So we made some money on the way. And then these monsters got totally nullified. So now there are one, two spaces that are still exposed to monsters for minus two. So in that last round, we ended up with a whopping, let's see, 36 plus 25 is going to be... 61, well, minus two. So we'll make that 59. Woo! All right, so we're gonna add all these up. So 20, 22. Uh, this is gonna be 121 total points for each, all of the seasons. And what we're gonna do is there's a way in the solo game to convert that into our title. So let's see what title the queen has given us. All right, so the way this is gonna work is here are optional titles. We're gonna add up the values in the bottom right of each of the scoring cards, and we're gonna subtract that from our total score to get a rating, brutal. So our total is gonna to be 20, 40, 60, 80, 84. So it's gonna be 121 minus 84 equals 37. So, Hey, this is the best I've ever done. We are legendary cartographers. I'm Liz, the legendary cartographer. Heck yes. So a lot of this depends on luck. Um, so depending on what cards come up, what scoring objectives that you have, um, you can have really, really good games. You can have really, really bad ones. That's part of what makes it fun. This was an exceptionally good game for me. So I'm pleased to have caught it on camera because it makes me feel smart, but trust me, that's not the reality. Um, and this was really, I really like Cartographers. I think it's a delightful game. I like the kind of Tetris map making, changing score, scoring conditions thing that it has going on. And um, yeah, it's it's really working for me as a roll and write. I would say it's probably hitting, if I had to pick the top five roll and writes, this would be in the top five for me. Um, I definitely, this is a like an advanced prototype copy. I definitely want my own, you know, real copy. So I'm probably, about to pre-order it now, actually, um, now that I'm thinking about it. And yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of this one, to be to be totally honest with you. It's a good mixture of puzzle, kind of like fun, satisfying drawing, and challenge, and um, having to watch multiple things at once, because you can't just mono-focus on one scoring condition when others are coming. So yeah, I'm a big fan of this one. I hope that you enjoyed this playthrough. And if you like my work, please like and subscribe, and happy gaming.
So there's one more thing I want to show y'all, which is that there's also a skills mini expansion for this game. So basically there are eight skill cards. You um, select three of them at random and put them in like a row in um, the center of the gaming area so you can use different skill cards each time. And then basically instead of just scoring off of your coins, uh, you can choose to spend them and pay the cost to use a skill once per season. So you can use one skill one time each season. So there's some neat little abilities in here. So search is free, which is pretty nice. So you can use it like once per turn, just draw an additional one by one square adjacent to a drawn shape. Um, you can do concentrate. So if an ambush card's not revealed, draw the chosen shape a second time and then fill it with the same terrain. So you can like basically double up. You can um, know different things. So you can use village terrain instead of an available terrain type. Basically it's like little tricks that lets you um, kind of replace shapes, try different things, change the terrain up a little bit. Um, you know, and it's just sort of a way to spice up the game and make it a little bit more interesting. And of course, if you're playing a pretty heated game against somebody else, it'll give you an opportunity to, um, to get a little tricky. So I also like, you know, you can draw a chosen shape so it overhangs the edge of the map. Pretty cool. And then you can draw things next to monster spaces if you have to use for, for cure ones. So I think it's a neat little expansion that can add a little bit of spice to the gameplay. And uh, it's, it's another neat addition. This whole game is another neat addition to the kind of role player universe. So that's the expansion and happy gaming.